we played a we played the um conference tournament, bro. Two days before the conference tournament, my point guard stands up and says, "Coach, we just feel like you're not doing stuff right." <laughs> Two days before the conference trip. <laughs> I said, man. Back to another episode of Speaking True Podcast, man. Now that's oh, crazy. shit, that man. Crazy, bro. And Coach is like, yeah. he looks at me like, oh, okay. So, uh, Coach sat down. He crossed his arm, crossed his legs. He said, so, who up? And, and, and the point guard was like, I'm not the only one that thinks that. Uh-huh. So, so, then, he, now he, I'm looking he, at Jared. Like, Jared is his name. Jared Haynes, bro. Uh, he playing Ireland now. Shout out, Jared. Coach like, so who else thinks this? Bro, I tell you, the whole room was silent. Uh-huh. Nobody stood up for him. Nobody said no. all that stuff people used to talk used about to in talk the meetings. Yeah, but talk about behind it. Coach back. Him. Nobody, nobody even stood up for him. And I'm, I'm looking at him. I'm, I'm, I'm just like, why, bro? Why did you do it? Uh-huh. Like, they trying to make, like a lot of people when stuff is not going right for you, they try to pull you in, like. You know what I'm saying? And in college, if you're the best player, yeah. they think you got... Like, if you're the best player and I'm on the bench, I think you can help me get in the game. How the right. fuck you can help me? We in the same position. We both play in college. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I don't vouch for people that put that don't put in hard work, so I ain't vouch for nobody but myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I don't know if you're working hard. Exactly. You could be sweating bullets and you in your mind, you can like, I'm not even trying. You know what I'm saying? Like, me in practice, I, don't, I barely sweat when I run. Mm-hmm. So, motherfuckers would be like, Jordan, you're not working hard. But I know I'm working hard. I know that, you know what I'm saying. So, it was just one of those things. It was it was hard to be that guy in the locker room. Yeah. But as time went on, I think I got better at it. Okay. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Because you know that that is the tough piece too. Because you're in a, it's grown men now. Like yeah. You know, at first, you know, it's like you know what I'm saying. Everybody trying to figure out, but now like you really in the room with grown men. Mm-hmm. People gonna start taking it how they feel. Like yeah. And that's the biggest thing too. Like but Hoopers, I feel like especially like everybody. It's like everybody had like a vision of how they they envisioned their career going or how they Facts. expected things to go. So when it doesn't fit that image, mm. they resort to pointing fingers, and it's like exactly. <laughs> it's like, bro, why didn't you just like you said? Why didn't you just go harder and practice? Like, there's some things I, I talked about this recently, like controlling what you can control. I don't know if you probably heard that a thousand times. As control a control what you control. Control what you control, like. You know that that that's funny, like how especially in that moment, like where nobody, like you said, people. People are going to always talking like they get like misery has company, right? So like people mm-hmm. gonna, like just conjoin together all the talk time about that shit. all the time. But bro. then when it's time for when that like the moment presented itself, you know, obviously like it's it's a bold like move from your point guard to call coach out in front of the whole team. Mm-hmm. But him thinking that he had the uh, people, behind, people him, behind him, no, like it's a lot of people that are they, yeah. they're, they're, they're they still understand in some kind of way. Like, this is this is like my only opportunity, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm not about to sit here and waste that over what yeah. I think is so it's like it's kind of like those people that didn't speak up it's like they they they, they understood the both sides of where it's like yeah. I'm feeling this way but it's also like damn in that moment nah bro this is coach like I'm not about to fuck this Man. Like, right now yeah. like you know what I'm saying yeah. I need my ticket like you know what I'm saying Facts. so but I, 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 that's kind of like copping peas to me at the same time. Bro, that's too. silent. That look, man. I was that's in the room, it. bro. That silence was so deadly, bro. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. Like all of y'all talk all this shit, mm-hmm. and y'all didn't stand up for y'all point guard. <laughs> that's a starting point guard yeah, too. Yeah, that's and all the like. That's, that's crazy. That's shit, man. I ain't gonna lie. That's, you see that a lot during basketball. <laughs> I swear to God, bro. Like, that's crazy, you know, man. You know, like be the people that don't. Like, it's funny be the, the don't play, unfortunately, right? And people, it's the people that don't play, and like mm-hmm. they don't. They like I said, they don't. Their image isn't being fulfilled, so they find them whatever they can to blame, and it's like, bro, you, maybe you don't play because you're not better. Like you say, you're not better than the dude in front of you. <laughs> that's point blank period that's all it is i mean some people don't understand you could look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself bro you suck but you're not you're not there right now uh-huh. you know it's better to suck for a season uh-huh. than to pretend you good for a lifetime right you know what i'm saying that's what i always tell myself like i could look at myself in the mirror and, and if i'm not on my shit be like jordan you're not on your shit uh-huh. you sucking right now you know what i'm saying instead of me pretending i'm good uh-huh. and acting like i should be playing i go home and tell my parents i should be playing a lot of parents what you think they gonna do? They gonna feed that, bro. You they kid, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing that you know my mom never did. She never stepped into my realm of basketball. Like, oh, my son should be playing more, even when I didn't play. You know, it was one of those things where I gotta do. I gotta learn myself, like what I gotta do. Whoever's in front of you, you gotta take their job. For sure. Point blank. Period. So, yeah. 
moving forward, man. Um, yeah, because you know we we could talk about bad teammates all day. I feel oh, like damn, you know day. <laughs> could talk about bad teammates all day, but um, you know, because I was gonna say I, you you mentioned it in the story, I, I, but you pretty much broke it down just now. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I told you, I paid attention. You was like, man, people were like kind of downplaying because it, it's it's those people that also uh, real quick. All we saw on this point, like there's people that can't clap for others when it's not their turn. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and that's part of what makes a team successful, like those championship teams. Like, even me, I had to sacrifice my senior year. Like, you know, I was going into – I was starting my sophomore year before mm-hmm. that COVID happens, brand new coach, whole new situation. So now I have to, like, pretty much prove myself again. But he yeah. also has his own vision of, like, how he wants the team to work. Mm-hmm. I wasn't starting, but I'm still, like, figuring out my whole rotational pieces and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's like I got dudes in front of me that I, I care about. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, we, our goal was to win the league. So we were like, all right, if it's not me playing no 30 minutes a night, it's cool. But I'd rather, like, I want the team to be successful. I can clap for, for my niggas when it's their turn. Yeah. Um, so, like, that's that's just the point I wanted to make before we moved on because yeah. like, a lot of people can't clap for others when it's not their turn. Bro. Facts. And it's, and it's sad. Um, Definitely agree with that. Sure, my God. <laughs> but, uh,. <laughs> Moving forward, they're like, you know, what is it like, um, you know, being that college hooper now? Like, you're getting ready to finish. Mm-hmm. First of all, too, before we, before you, I move on, so I want to move on. You, you got your master's degree. Yeah. Right? You know, not for not, not everybody, not many people want to do that. Facts. Not, not many black people want to do that. Facts. So, you know, talk about, you know, what what made you want to go into a high level education and yeah. like lock in and get that master's degree. Well, I, um, I graduated COVID year. So when I graduated COVID year and I found out we got an extra year, now I'm like, okay, I can leave, go to a different school and pursue my master's, uh-huh. or I could stay with the people that I started with and try to win the championship, right. or I could go to a different school in our conference, right. the one of the best schools. Uh-huh. And it was kind of one of those things where I'm like, I'm already here, you know, why, why, why change what's already destined? Uh-huh. You know, I'm right here, I'm, I'm right where I want to be. We got the pieces to do it. We just got to go do it, right. you know. So um, it was one of those things where I'm like, and no one in my family don't got a master. So right. I'm like, why not, you know what I'm saying, beat the odds and, right. and do something that hasn't been reached in your family tree. And it was one of those things where I just like, let's lock in, let's do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, I got it done. It, it was it was tough, but I got it done. And um you're doing the wild hooping too, right? Still. Yeah. So my first year, I did a wild hooping. Then I went overseas. I came back and coached, and then I got I finished it. Okay. But um, while I was playing, it was tough. Right. Damn. So that's I, I like. So what's that? What would you say like on a like I know because undergrad you might have you know your course records, yeah, six classes. But I know when you're into the the graduate school, it yeah. Might be, Smaller classes, yeah. Or like so you classes, but you have a lot more work. Yeah, yeah. So you doing, you doing, um, you you got one, you got two classes a semester. Sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes you got four. Right. But if you got two classes a semester, each class is um eight weeks. Mm-hmm. So you do all your work in eight weeks, and then that class is over with. Okay. Then you do the next class all the way. You only got, but if you got two classes, mm-hmm. it's a lot of work, bro. Right. A lot of discussions, a lot of essays. It's a lot of writing. You know what I'm saying? In general, it's just a lot of writing, a lot of reading. So um, I would say that undergrad, to me, was harder because you got a lot more classes that you got to balance. Yeah. Um, But um, the work and the efficiency you had to do it in for the master's was a little bit harder. A little harder. Yeah. Because your time management when you were undergrad, Mm -hmm. if it's not good, you gonna fail some classes. Uh-huh. You got a lot more time to manage when you're doing your masters because you only take in one class. Right. Fuck, how, do, how don't you go to class? Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? If if there is in-person class, if it's not in its own line, sure. how don't you get that assignment that you got a full week? Uh-huh. So yeah. So, so really talk about the, the discipline because obviously, you know, from having to do that, then you mm-hmm. got hoops. Yeah. You know, you, you, like it, and not even just hoops. Like you might be practice, but you're also spending time like outside of that. Outside, to, yeah. To, to yeah. Get better. Like talk about like the discipline you felt you had to create for yourself. Yeah. You know, throughout you know that I think you know, four year period, six year period. Four yeah, years. I think that um, once I figured it out how to get that discipline, I was good. Okay. And I, I like I said, my junior year in high school helped me propel okay. and like helped me like figure out just get the work done, for just sure. get it done. Cause when I got it done. My work is due 
if my work is due Sunday and it's Monday, I'm doing the work on Monday. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be done by Tuesday. Right. So that when, when we play Wednesday, because we play Wednesday, Saturdays. Mm-hmm. We play Wednesday, I'm good. Right. You know what I'm saying? After the game, we can go eat. We can go do whatever we want. After Saturday, I'm really good. Now we yeah. lit. I'm getting outside, lit. I'm, yeah. We outside. I'm lit. We can get drunk, do what we got to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not one of those things where I got to wake up Sunday after being out all night. Mm-hmm. After playing, you know what I'm saying? Playing, you be sore as hell, bro. Exactly. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, just get the work done. Just get the work done early. And it was some days where, like, okay, I didn't do the work and I had to do it on Sunday. But I know to tell myself, just get the work done. So, yeah. Hell yeah. So, obviously, I feel like having that type of discipline, right? I finally transitioned into your professional career and what you started to do after yeah. um, college and everything, right? You ended up playing. In Albania, you said Albania, right? Albania, yeah. Albania, yep. um, you did that, and also you played here in the TBL. Yep. So that's that's a whole other conversation within itself, right? Yeah. Because you got European play, you got American play. Yeah. Leaving America, collegiate American play to go right. to professional European play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, what is one? What would you say the transition? Let's let's a lot of transitions for you, mm-hmm. but let's start with one: the lifestyle, right? The lifestyle, After yeah. One, two, like you say, you're here in America. You, you're used to what you're used to now. You know, I mean. Even from Maryland to West Virginia it might be a little bit of a little culture shock. Yeah. You're talking about from, yeah. like you said, from here to the here state, now. Yeah. So, yeah. What is that like? You know what I, I'm saying? I think, like, when I got off the plane, bro, I said, oh, shit. I said, <laughs> I said, damn. Bro, I was, first of all, I was scared. I watched too many movies, bro. Right. So I was scared. I'm like, hold the fuck up. So when they came and picked me up, right, uh-huh. they talking to me in the car, talking to me in the car, they take me to my apartment. I'm looking at the apartment. I'm like, bro, this shit don't even look like no apartment building in the U.S., right? right? So I go up in the apartment, and I'm like, I'm looking out the window, making sure the motherfucker's not going to kidnap me or some <laughs> bullshit, yo. I'm scared. I'm like, I'm like, man, if these niggas take me, dog. So um, after that, I think the lifestyle um, in Albania is a bit more um, like like everybody's family, kind of. Um and when I say not, not, not like everybody, but you'll see, like, if you see certain people a lot of times and they know who you are, they it's treat cool, you good. Yeah. Like, the restaurant we used to go to, they treat us like, you know what I'm saying, they own. They make right. sure we eat. They make sure we got drinks. They, right. you know what I'm saying, make sure that the um, fan base, mm-hmm. you know, they, they love us, bro. They, they, they so love you, nice, man. man. Like, I remember the kids used to get out of school, and, they, and I, if I'm walking down the street, they all coming with me. They all talking to me, <laughs> following me back on Instagram. That's all right. You know what I'm saying? Um but but the lifestyle itself was uh, a little bit different because um, in Albania uh, there's no like dryers like not a lot of people not a lot of people have dryers so yeah you got to hang your clothes a lot and that was um, one of the things that I'm like damn I got to hang my clothes so um, if I hang my clothes and it rain when I'm sleeping yeah. now I got to rewash the clothes y'all I'm sick and yeah. sometimes on the uh, if you got the pins and they not tight enough. Mm-hmm. Your socks will fly away because the wind and shit, and right. you're not getting that shit, bro. That shit far, bro. Yeah. So, um, it, it it was crazy to see. Okay. Like, it's a lot of dog, loose dogs, a lot of loose dogs. Like, it was one night I was up playing the game. I hear it sound like a dog was getting jumped by other dog, but they was getting they was getting to it. Hey, they was getting to it out there. Bro. I ain't gonna hold you. They was getting to it. They was getting to it. So like. It's you, you like you'll see a lot, and yeah. you re- you rarely see like poor people though, because mm. everything in that country is kind of affordable. Okay. Like, you got the market. I th- I'll say like the best thing though, but the food was so fresh, bro. Fresh, yeah. Like way fresher than the states, right. man. Like we go, like I went to a restaurant my first, kind of like my first time eating out with my American teammates, and I got um, appetizer, entree, and like three glasses of wine, bro. That shit was only fifteen U.S. dollars, bro. Uh, I said, well, man. Out here, I man. said, man. Yeah, out here they not fuck with that. Yeah, they not fuck with that. So like, damn. that was one of the things that opened my eyes. Like, damn, bro. It because this shit ain't cost that much to right. eat, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, so, and they make sure you fed. So mm-hmm. that was that was a couple of things that you know kind of shocked me out there. Right. Okay, well, that's that's fine. So what would you say, like? But was the team aspect now like being mm-hmm. you know with those co- the coaching staff? What was the yeah. coaching staff like? Yeah. You know, I know uh, especially the 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 overseas market yeah. can get interesting, right? Because especially as an American player, yeah, really they bring you here for one reason: to score the damn basketball. For Facts. <laughs> Facts. So what was it like? Um, you know, what I'm saying 
having like the coach staff, what was the coaching staff like and you know how did you how would you have to navigate, you know, just even the the business of this whole entire process? Yeah, I think the coaching staff, um, it was good. You know, Melzen, um, he was a good coach, man. Like he was the best coach I had as far as like pushing me to be something I wasn't. You know, because coming from college, I wanted to play the one in college, and I couldn't because we had a point guard. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when I went out there, he like, you a one. Because I was the shortest player on the team. You know what I'm saying? And he taught me how to make those reads, how to watch the tag, man. How When I'm coming off a screen, I'm not worried about my defender. I'm watching this tag, man, to see if he helped too much. And I'm looking at this corner. You right. feel me? Or if, they, if, if he go and then they flip switch... Now I'm hitting hitting the wing, right. you know what I'm saying? So, like, he taught me a lot, and he, he taught me how, like, I, I thought I was working hard until I went out there. <laughs> until I went out there, I thought I was working hard, man. Like, bro, they pushed us hard, bro. Like, every practice, I'm sweating. And I tell you, I barely yeah, sweat. I'm yeah. drenched, bro. Drenched. And I'm working oh, hard, shit. and we playing defense full court. Mm. And he, he not one of them coaches that he don't care who's scoring the ball. Right. He just care that we, we one point better than the other team. That's it. That's all he wanted to do was win. He a winner. You know what I'm saying? And that season, I learned how to be a winner. Like, I came off the bench. And I was about, like, 14. And I played, like, only average, like, 15 minutes. So, like, when you get in there, you're sufficient. You better play hard for four minutes and you coming out the game. There was one time I was, it's on YouTube, too. I, I was so tired, bro. Like, I had fell on my tailbone. And he, I'm like, bro. I'm like, bro, come get me out of the game. And I barely asked for a sub in college, bro. Like, it was some game I played 40 minutes. Uh So, like, he teach you how to, like, play hard for three to four minutes, Uh ask for a sub, okay, get a break, go back in. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I just learned how to win out there. You know, like I said, the basketball-wise, team aspect-wise, a lot more IQ. Uh You know what I'm saying? A lot more plays. But, um, like I said, in European basketball, coaching matters a lot. Was there any players that you that kind of helped you with also the integration process? Yeah, hell yeah, my dog AV, okay. uh, my man Marcus Pat, yo, know, that's my guy, and uh, Jelly, my guy Jelly, he was a point, he was a starting point guard. Okay. He helped me with everything, I and mean, we used to guard each other every day in practice, give each other hell. Mm-hmm. But uh, when it was game day, like that was my dog. Right, right. Yeah. So what was. You know, is there a game in particular that you remember from Albania mm. before we come back to the United States? Shit, I I, I remember all them damn all games, games, bro. It, it it was one game though that that stuck out for me. Um, I think we played uh, I think it was uh, Kamza. We played Kamza, uh-huh. and um, we was we was kind of like battling in the whole game, battling, 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 and I think we started the game down. We started the game down by a lot. And I'm waiting for him to put me in. I'm like, is my fucking gonna put me in the game? Like, come on, bro. Right. And then um, he put me in. We start coming back, coming back. And then like the way we pulled that dub off showed me like why we was the best team. You feel me? Like we was locking in on defense. Offense was clicking. Uh, my man Pat, he was the leading scorer. He iced the game with a three. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, it was one of those things where like that was a hard fought dub, and we earned that. You know what I'm saying? And that was one that was that was the one game and then when we played Tirana, they were supposed to be one of the best teams. They actually did beat us in the playoffs, but um we played them at home, but we blew them niggas out by forty, bro. They ain't had no answer to what we was doing, bro. Like that was one of those games where like everything clicking. <laughs> It'd be funny as hell to play yeah, those games, but I got a dunk too, like the crowd was going crazy. So like I remember all them games, bro. Those my guys, like they really taught me the ropes of like overseas and everything. So what would you say now to the next player that's getting ready for their overseas contract? What was something that you want to tell somebody to get to prepare for? Just be just prepare. Like depending on your coach, you're not always going to agree with what they say, mm-hmm. but you got to be politically correct if you want to keep playing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I I also tell them like whatever you think your game is right. in Europe is not, bro. Like you got to play that style of basketball. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's hard sometimes to bring our style to Europe because we got a little bit of flash. Mm-hmm. You feel me? They more fundamentally sound and they more smart, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I think just focusing on the little things and the fundamentals, I think right. people skip over that a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, it's one of those things that can bite you in, in, in the long run if you don't. For sure. For sure. 
I know you probably, I don't know if you, this was the moment, but what was that pro, that first moment that made you say, all right, I'm a pro now? Like, I'm um, a pro. I think it was, uh, shit, actually, I, Actually, I've been saying I'm a, I was a pro when I was in like JUCO, but <laughs> but I think like the first moment where I really knew though mm-hmm. is when I came back home. Okay. And when I came back home and we was playing in JMO League, okay. Bro, I'm like, cause I was pressing like we we play man, so I'm up. You up on the point guard? It don't matter. And I'm pressing people, mm-hmm. and they not getting by me. Like I'm pressing them out, mm-hmm. stealing the ball, 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 and I'm like. These niggas trash, yo. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a pro. Like, that I, that shows a different skill gap. You right. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think that was one of the moments. For sure. So, talk about, you know, the difference now from Euro League play to joining the TBL. Yeah. Right? You, in the TBL, you average damn 27 points. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. what was that? What was it like coming from, you know, probably a more aggressive, more, like, Fundamentally solid as you're talking about mm-hmm. to not come to sit back to the states. Yeah, kind of doing it on some like yeah. it's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it, and you were doing it in that uh, that another master's year. You were saying yeah. So so when I came back from overseas, mm-hmm. I had uh, helped out. I was a GA at right. Willing, so I was coaching because they don't got no assistants at Willing. Right. The head coach and you got GAs. Okay. So it was three GAs. I'm helping coaching mm-hmm. and I'm finishing my masters. Okay. So the journey of me coaching, like I said, I expressed it earlier. Right. Uh, I finished my masters. And then I go play in the TBL because they like, you know, we need players. Right. They're giving out money. So I'll come play. It's right up the street. It's mm-hmm. in Charleston. So I go out there and uh, in training camp, the coach ain't know who I was. Right. And it was a lot of players from the Mountain East that played in it on, in the TBL. So, you know me, I'm just kind of taking the back road, watching people, watching people. Mm-hmm. And during tryouts, I just start turning up. Like, I, I, I went off because... I think after the first day, he told me this one dude, he was like, yeah, like, he kind of got that point guard spot. I'm like, over who? He's not (laughs) better than me, bro. Are you crazy? You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, I take it personally. The next day at camp, I'm on it. I'm pressing the full court. You know what I'm saying? He he get tired and get hurt or something. Some shit happened. And I've told Coach, I'm like, he not built for the moment. Like, he just not built, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, um, after that, um... It was kind of it was kind of smooth sailing. Mm-hmm. I think the rules, like I said, you play a lot harder overseas. Right. We wasn't playing hard in the TBL yeah. defensively. Mm-hmm. I mean, we would play hard, but we not playing smart. I was because most of these guys they play in TBL, but they going probably back to work. Yeah. The stuff yeah. Like that. So, so like really like a lot of the stuff was um, it was watered down a lot, bro. Like that's a league where if you got a team where y'all practicing every day, mm-hmm. you should win. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's harder to defend, though, with the rules that we played under. So, we play at TBL, you play NBA rules. NBA okay. three. Right. No defensive. Three seconds, yeah. yeah. No three seconds on defense. Uh-huh. Um, you playing. A, it, it, it's a lot. So, like, you playing 24 seconds shot clock. Shot, yeah. So, now you got to move faster. So, the pace was faster than your. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the basketball wasn't better. I, I would say, like, it was harder to score over there. Uh-huh. Um because the defense was better, you know what I'm saying, and like I was, I was killing in the TBL. Like, but I felt like I was in shape because I was coaching college, but I was also working out every day. When I went overseas, I was working. I didn't get, I didn't go straight to overseas. I was working, and then I went overseas. I'm like, oh shit, like I'm not in shape. So I had to get in shape. You know what I'm saying? Do that process. Then I got hurt overseas one time. Then I came back, but. Um, the TBL just the NBA rules is harder to defend. Right. It's just harder to defend. Cause, yeah, you, cause like the hands, you know. Yeah, hands. yeah, it's, it's a lot of stuff, and like yeah. the paint be wide open wide. too. Mm-hmm. Like if you go past somebody, you're gonna get a layup. Right. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. yeah, Damn, that's crazy. So, yeah. Um, so I mean, hell of a career for you. I, I, I'm gonna leave it at that point yeah. now in terms of playing. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, you did a lot of what a lot of people couldn't do. Facts. Um, you know. They say like it's like less than one percent from high school to college, less than mm-hmm. zero point whatever percent from college to yeah. post. So the fact that you did that one, gotta give you flowers right now for that. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. And, and, and you know, it, it comes with a lot of like, especially the DMV. Like you know, it's always just talking about the DMV. We got the hoopers, right? And even like I said, being a Moco guy doing it. Like, yeah. That's, that's like double like. All right, yeah. Man, like I'm Josh Stepp. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. like. What is it like, you know, navigating just the hoop scene now, hoop back home? Like, yeah. 
Uh, you know, obviously you you played in some of the leagues that's going mm-hmm. on out out here for the professionals to be at. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just what is it like? You know what I'm saying? Navigating the the, the hoops back home now. You know, with all these people that I yeah mean, we, can, we can talk about it. Like everybody yeah. small, everybody knows something about yeah. hoops. So yeah, now we talk about the navigation. Um, I think that um when I came back home, you know, I got my flowers, mm-hmm. but I still think that Moco title is over my name right. it, it will always be because that's where i'm from that's right. where i grew up and i feel like i still don't get the respect i deserve but at the end of the day now it don't mean nothing to me right. because i did what i had to do mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying i, I scored a thousand points in college right. and, and and willing alone not even counting my juco right. stats now, that's what two two three years you did that two yeah three years i almost 1400 points in, three in 70 years, years. i mean 70 games 70 games that's 70 games that's that's 20 a game. That's tough. You know what man. I'm saying? I'm the fastest 1,000 point scorer in history. Me and Marcus Johnson, we tied. Okay. So, like, I'm all time, I mean, conference. Mm-hmm. Three time all conference, one time all region, one time all tournament. Right. So, like, these are things like that, I, that you can't take that away from me. Right. And the most important thing to me is I got three degrees I got my associates, I got my bachelor's, I got my master's. Mm-hmm. Can't take that away from me. Right. So, when I come home, and people saying, "Oh, why you don't play in Watts? Why you don't play down the farms no more?" That it that don't move me. What 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 do I have to prove to y'all? Uh-huh. I already did what I had to do under the real lights, uh-huh. under the whistle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like not not at home. Uh-huh. I feel comfortable at home. Right. That's, that's easier for me. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like then me having to go game plan, having to guard the best player. Like come on, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? So. I think navigating hoops back home is a little bit uh, frustrating at times just because you got a lot of people that, like I said, like I told you earlier, they don't want to hand that baton off and watch you go win the gold. Right. You know what I'm saying? They want to run past you. like, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then the whole race going to catch up to them. Right. Like you, you, you got people nowadays that just gatekeeping from the youth, I think. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, they, they, like when, when they see the youngins doing something, now they feel like they can hop in and do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of seen, like, Scoob was the first person I seen on the YouTube tip with the one-on-one stuff. Right. But really, like, he he took it to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Um, even Mill, like, Jay Mill, right. he he started the one-on-one stuff. Like, during COVID, right. it was Mill. Saying, yeah, it was Mill live. one-on-one. Live. Yeah. Yeah, Jay Mill was the, the, the one-on-one. Like, he blew that up. Uh-huh. You feel me? Scoop took it to the next level, right. but he blew that up. And then he goes into a new realm, like, you know, Lost Ones Classic. Shout out Lost Ones. Um, and, uh, you know, now they're doing big things. And you got, you know, older people kind of coming back like, oh, no, nah, that's not the real DC that went out there. That's that's Maryland. That's yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. kind of yeah. trying to create that gap. But it's like, just get a young man his flowers, dog. Right. Like, he, he, he made something. That got to ESPN, mm-hmm. however many outlets Cam it got to. Like Cam it Newton, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, why not just get behind them? Like, yo, Mill, like, can I hoop with y'all? Right. You know, why I gotta be get on live and bash this and that? So, you know what I'm saying? That's that's the DMV for you. Like, we're, we're now we're in this conversation. Like, I feel like that's just the, you know how everybody say crabs in the barrel one. But mm-hmm. it's also more like it's a it's a pride that we that we have when we come from. Yeah. Here, right? But I feel like that pride also works against each other in yeah. the moments that you're talking about because it's like because I didn't do it right now yeah. I gotta feel like oh when he did it it's, yeah. it's not as valuable yeah you know significant because yeah. it didn't include me yeah you feel what I'm saying yeah. or it didn't include people that I know so it's like now you know the politics and everything yeah. how shit moves out yeah. there because yeah, everybody, everybody swear they motherfucking, they, they know everything uh, man. They, know they know it man, all right? everybody do bro and that's why like like I said like a lot of the stuff just don't move me no more because it's like, who are you to tell me if I'm valid right. in hoops? Like, you ain't do nothing. Right. You ain't make it further than me. You might got more points down good, man, but what that mean? <laughs> what that mean? You did that, that thing. Nah. Okay. No disrespect to the league. No disrespect no, to the league. I'm not disrespecting yeah, no nah, leagues. Nah, nah, I'm, sure I'm just saying, saying I'm just saying how I felt about, like, a lot of people when they come up to me about, Oh, or oh, you played in this league? That league don't even mean that much in this league. Why not? Why not play in this league? I'm like, mm-hmm. bro, the, none of the leagues mean shit, shit to me, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just mm-hmm. talk about it, 
we was the champs of this league, okay, what do you get? A little trophy, and you get your name stamped in, what? It's not, that no one gonna remember that you won that tip, bro. Yeah. You feel me? Unless you remind them. Mm-hmm. But, like, I think, um, as far as, like, hoops goes, I learned a lot. Like, I was telling you about the political side and how I how I spoke to people, how I moved on and off the court, mm-hmm. uh, how hard I played, the relationships I made with, like, refs, mm-hmm. coaches, players, yeah. um, athletic trainers, um, everybody, like, right. ADs. Like, I can go back to Willing whenever, and they show me so much love. Right. Yeah. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And that's because I was politically correct. Mm-hmm. And... It's just sad to say that I can go somewhere and play basketball that I'm not even known, and then when I come back home, I don't get that same love. Cause right. it's like you didn't do as much as me in high school. Like, bro, I didn't play in high school. Like, would you want me to go back and change right, that? Go back and change that. You feel yeah, me? Nah, so it's one of those things. Yeah, it's, Sorry, bro. it's one of those things where it's like I think the area got get together a little bit more, mm-hmm. support each other. And that's 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 why like coming down here was good for me. Because, you know what I'm saying, we had spoke about this for a long time. And it's one of those things where, like, shit, if I got the support to help you and you got the platform to share my story, sure. you know what I'm saying, why not? Because um, the more athletes we get down here to speak with you, rappers, athletes, you know, anybody in general, uh, the bigger and bigger your platform will come from. And then it'll help, it'll help out both sides because a lot of people's stories, like, it's crazy, bro. A lot of people's story. A lot of people got crazy stories, and you'll hear. You probably heard something I said today. Like, whoa, I didn't even know that. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people got crazy stories, and even like uh, my man's Arnold. I told you. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna try to get him down here so he could talk to you about his yeah. journey because his journey was crazy, bro. Uh-huh. And and I don't know all the ins and outs of his journey, uh-huh. but I know most of it. And right. just from what I know, like that he shares with me that I've been there for. Right. His brother, you have to sit yeah. Down. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. So, um, definitely got to give you your flowers for doing something like this. Appreciate it, bro. For sure. You know, that's 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 what like, the whole fact that we've had that that latter part of the conversation in terms of the DMV and the mm-hmm. vibes like that's that's what kind of inspires me to do what I do, right? Because yeah, it's one. It's not a lot of people that communicate in the way that I'm trying to get you guys to communicate, right? And have people actually open up and like speak on the things instead of like you know trying to out cool each other like that's yeah the, that's the shit that i like, yeah hey, you know what I'm saying? everybody want everybody like you gonna be super cool bro you they do be it. trying to be cool as shit bro <laughs> they be trying to be cool bro oh my god so like yeah everyone will be out, out cool each other but it's it's like nah bro like at the end of the day like we all know what we have here we it's yeah like, we talk about it so much it's like why not put it in a in a situation like this a platform like this and really show people like what we have and what yeah. we can, like really offer to just the culture of like in general like United States black yeah. people, whatever you call it like our story is just as good as the LA or Facts, Chicago, bro. New York Atlanta like our shit is just as good but we so busy fighting each other on it we don't know how to put it out there for yeah. people. and like it's yeah. a whole process like I said I appreciate you like just wanting to take time to do this because yeah. I want to make sure that people know that it's cut. It's, it's here we yeah. just gotta keep it Facts. and I, I think that like like you said like I think it's more the mental thing for the DMV. Like, nobody wants to show weakness or something. Like, it's like, yeah. like I could sit here, like, bro, I think my last year at Wheeling, bro, I went through, like, the most depressing time of my life. Uh-huh. Probably, like, second most. The first one was probably when YT passed away. Right. But, like, I was out of it with basketball, bro. Uh-huh. And you won't even tell that by looking at my stats or nothing. But, like, it, I just lost the love, bro. And I'm like, uh-huh. it, it what really hurt me was when, like, after the games, I scored 40. I had 30. I have, well, I, I had 39. I never scored 40. I'm really mad about 40, that. I'm really mad about that, but it's cool. That's but cool. but when I have these good games, mm-hmm. what used to really frustrate me is like, I see my teammates' parents. I see my, when we come out that locker room, my teammates' parents, they right there. They parents right there. And I'm like, damn, like my mom at home working. My dad nowhere to be found. Like, so I had to handle that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, In- yeah. Internally. Yeah. And a lot of my teammates they didn't know that that affected me. But, like, mm-hmm. that was big, bro. Like, mm-hmm. my conference, the, the last two games I ever played, uh, one of the last games, my friend Deja, her father, like, was on the phone talking to me. Like, he OG, right. he'll chop it up with me. Yeah. And he just like, yo, man, if y'all win that game, I'm coming to your next game. You feel me? My mom was at the first game, so I'm going. Oh, I had 30. Right. I'm 30. Mom there, I'm having 30. You feel me? And then that next game, he show up. 
And it's kind of like he one of those father figures, like OG. You know what I'm saying? We end up losing to Wesley. They was ranked number fifth in the nation, I think, that year. But we end up losing by, like, six. And, and like, all the emotions just came out because it's like, damn, like, my own father, like, not here. But someone is there to to, to watch me. You feel me? And uh, it was just a special moment. Like, that, that really affected me in college. And a lot of people didn't know that. And um, it was just one of those things where I also wanted to be known more than just a basketball player. Like, everybody seen me. And they feel like I walk around with this cocky attitude, but really it's like, bro, I don't got no one to speak to about like what truly goes on inside my head and what truly goes on inside my heart. Cause like, that's all y'all see me as is this basketball player yeah. or, you know what I'm saying? A hi head. That's it. For so sure. yeah. I was going to say, yeah, I, I, it, yeah. It, I, Cause I have a similar situation to you, but terms of like, yeah, my mom, like she didn't couldn't make really all of my games in mm-hmm. college and stuff like that, right? Cause she got my... Like other siblings, you gotta look out, uh, look after too. Yeah. Um. So I, I definitely, I definitely feel you on the, like you know you, you seeing everybody's people around you, and even like like the games, like it could be a big ass game too, like a big yeah, game or whatever. And it's like everybody got their people to celebrate with, and you just like you did, ah, you yeah, know, bro, you did, bro. You was there, so it's yeah. like you know, like talk about like, and that's why I, I should have brought up earlier, but like you know, especially in these places where it's like far from home, you're away yeah. from home, and like. You know, you really out there on your own. What is it like? Just talk about what it what it's like having to carry yourself in these places, right? Mm-hmm. Knowing that, like, I'm just I'm all I have, and I'm just representing everything that that came behind me. Yeah, shit. yeah. I think that is just like you carry yourself a certain way because you know that um, you don't only represent the school or the mm-hmm. club that you play for or the organization you play for, but um, you got it. You you carry your family's name. You know what I'm saying? You carry your family's name wherever you go. And that's one of the biggest things to me. It was like, man, it was hard. It was hard to be um, in certain situations where I'm like, okay, I got a big game. I'm about to go for 40. I'm about to win. So we win big games. We come out the locker room and like, damn, like nobody there. You feel me? That was the toughest part for me. And like you said, um, just basketball in general is, is one of those sports was like, you put a lot of work in, mm-hmm. so like when you see your work come into fruition, yeah. you want to you want to celebrate with yeah. people that you love. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You want to have that family that supports you. Mm-hmm. And even though like my teammates, family, they used to like take me out, go right. eat. It's still not the, same. not the same. You know, it's not yeah. quite the same. So um, it was one of those battles that I had to go through, but it's good. It was good for me. Well, that's, that's real. Build. It definitely builds more into you know the character. I feel like you know, yeah. for yourself. Facts. Um, and also, like, you know, you've all spoken enough to now, like, be trusted by a coach to the yeah. PGA, right? Talking about, like, now being on that side of the yeah. game, right? Yeah. You didn't know what you said. I, 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 Jordan Brewer, everything to everybody. So, <laughs> now it's time to pass the sauce off yeah. and get it off to the next generation, right? So talk about even, I feel like that's another problem, too, in the DMV. You mentioned, like, uh, briefly, right? Yeah. The, you know, people from at one level not trying to pass on the game. It was like, everybody, yeah. you know, some people still find it so hard to be the dream themselves or have it be themselves if they're not willing to say, you know what, I see someone that's just as passionate as I was at one point. Yeah. And I can help them and guide them or at least tell them what they can do to, you know, really stay focused on what that is, on, on that path. So what's yeah, it like been a coach, you know, after, you know, all this, you know, success you had planned. Yeah. I mean it was it was it was hard at first because um as a coach you gotta tend to a lot of feelings. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to. Um, that's part of your job, but you also got to deal with, you know, like myself, I'm a player that's going to put in 100% effort. You got to deal with players that's not going to do that all the time. You can't yell at everybody. You got you to gotta talk to some people this way. You got to talk to some people that way. Some people, you know, they come from a softer background. You got to, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, that shit sometimes irritate my soul, you feel me? Like you here on a scholarship. And I gotta speak to you like you like a baby, you feel me? But it is what it is. That's what you gotta do. Not everybody takes yelling at them well. So, um, and I see myself in a lot of players. Like I see where they missing, um, what they can add to their game, what they can't, what works in the game. Like some of the players, I tell them constantly, bro, just do the move. I'm telling you, you're gonna score. They finally do the move. They look over at the bench like, hey, you feel me? I got it. You feel me? So it was one of those things where it was hard in the beginning. But at the end, I kind of understood, like, how hard coaching is. And it opened my eyes. I'm like, the job is not easy. Yeah. It's not easy at all. Because you got players that 
gonna come in and work, but they trash. Point blank period. Trash. You got players that's gonna come in and work and they good, mm-hmm. and then you got those those guys that they come in, they work, but they just not good enough to get on the floor. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 you gotta find a way to motivate them because you may come in and work hard, but you just not good enough to get on the floor, bro. You know what I'm saying? And um, it what really like helped me out though was when I went recruiting and I gave people scholarships to get to the next level. Like the look on their family's faces, like oh my god, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's always what I wanted. You know, I, I got my offer over the phone, so it was a little bit different. But they parents there, they're like, you know what I'm saying? That that's good. You feel me? I can only imagine what that moment is like, bro. Don't fuck yeah. it because it's like, yeah, similar to me. Like, I, 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 eventually I see myself coaching and probably doing, like, a little recruiting and stuff like that, too. But, mm-hmm. you know, like, really talk about that moment, though, right? Knowing that you're about to pretty much change somebody's life. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's a heavy moment. Like, Facts. Like, for you to kind of offer that moment to somebody. Facts. Like, what is it like knowing, like, what, or what, what about that player – like really, make you say, you know what? This is the time. Or the yeah. Person I want to give this opportunity. Right. Well, like I told you, like I told you earlier, it's like how they carry themselves on and off the court. Uh-huh. You know how they pick their teammates up. I went, I went to go watch one kid, uh, Josh Sear. Okay. Come on, uh, he went to PG, right? Yeah, he went to PG. I went to go watch him, and he wasn't having a good shooting night, but like they was down big, and he was still cheering his teammates on. Come on, y'all! Come on, come on, y'all! He wasn't shooting the ball good. He like, come on, y'all! We good, we good. Uh-huh. He remember every play. I can I know when a, a person messes up a play. Right. Some people just stand there, <laughs> and some people yeah. just cut, and they don't even yeah. know where they're yeah. going. I can yeah. see all the action now that I play basketball so much. Mm-hmm. So like he like, come on y'all, like we good, we good, we good. Just kept pushing, kept pushing his teammate. Then he start hitting, bang, bang, bang. Mm-hmm. Still the same energy, right. same energy the whole game. I never seen the poise from a player like that. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And especially at the JUCO level. Right. So I knew, like, if we could get him, we, that's a steal, bro. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. And um, he ended up going to Fresno State, like, ended up getting a D1 later mm-hmm. in the year. But, like, like players like that, just, just I see myself in them a lot. And I'm like, you know, you deserve the opportunity. Because sure. some some players I, I did go watch, and I'm like, uh, yeah. you feel me? Not everybody deserves an opportunity. Right. You feel me? You can't. Mm-hmm. Bro, I can't come back to the DMV and give everybody from the DMV right. opportunity. That's, sure. that's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But those that are worthy of the opportunity, um, they were all definitely grateful for. It, and I was definitely grateful to be there and be like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We want you to be a part of what we got going on. Right, that's, that's major, bro. Right, that's, do you see yourself doing that long term or like as you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think, I think um, as I get, like if Willen had a position where I could have stayed, mm-hmm. I would have stayed one more year. Right. Um, but since my GA shit was up, it was right. like I will have to find another job out there, then ref, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it was tough, but um, I can see myself doing that. I can see myself doing that, like in the, in, in the future. Okay, nice. That's, that's that's major, bro. Nice, no, major. Like, um, slight addition again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I never let me get busy here. Obviously, let me gives you a good opportunity to plug in. You know, the studio. I, you know what I'm saying? Got got the studio right here, man. I'm, I'm locked in. With the guys, my man Jordan just ran the last beat. You know what I'm yes, saying? sir. That's my dog too. I met, bro. I met, I met Nate, bro. Like Howard days, bro. Work. Is everybody say he did? You so he got, he got him right when it, and like that one he played, right? Yeah, he no, no. So not the year he played, oh, but he had came back, and him and Zay Zay was cool. Okay. So I had ran into Nate, and I'm like, what's good? We had talked a little bit, so we had connected, like you know what I'm saying, throughout the year. So okay. yeah, that's my dog. That's, that's what's up. That's yeah. Soul. Moco, man, we in the building, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do yeah. out here. Um, yeah. But now that's that's dope. We was just talking about that. You and the, the pushing forward to the next level mm-hmm. um, in terms of coaching, I should say. But really, uh, before while we're still there, before we move on and get ready to wrap up, you know, just talk about um, the youth, right? Because you know we have yeah. been back home enough now to see, you know, kind of what it's like, what these kids are like. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously, I from and my because I've been in the county too, right? It's mm-hmm. it's a it's way different from when we came, up, right? Man. Um, and and obviously, just part of what I want to do and what I talk about, right, is kind of just bringing a sense of morality back to the yeah. society because, you know, obviously when we grow up, we have we learn manners, we learn respect, we learn yeah. how to just carry ourselves in different places. These yeah. this next generation, right, they're not as good at that. So, yeah. you know, obviously, what. You know, what have you seen or what are, what are some things that, you know, you want to tell the next generation of youth, man, so that, you know, how we can bring that yeah. sense of morality back? Yeah, I think that uh, the next generation just got to know, like, you got to carry yourself a certain way because 
you 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 do represent your family when you leave your house. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the things I learned that like when I grew up, like you gotta you gotta do things a certain way in the right way. You feel me? A lot of them, um, you gonna make mistakes, right. but that's okay to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the hardest part is learning from those mistakes and not make them again. Right. Like the kids nowadays, bro, they be disrespectful, bro. What? And I think it's because. Yeah. They don't have the communication that we have, you know. They they can't sit here and, and talk to you like this. You yeah. feel me? Mm-hmm. They 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 grew up in, in the COVID times where it, it was hard. You know, they all online. They don't they don't, they don't got good like social skills. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to go up to someone and just talk and just right. you know bond with anybody like that. Um, so you know, growing up in an era where technology started becoming bigger and bigger and bigger, mm-hmm. uh, it's hard for them to um, understand. And know like people skills, right. you feel me? Um, that's one of the biggest things though. Like with mm-hmm. the next generation, they gotta get better people skills. Right. And I, I didn't work with kids like I told you earlier, like mm-hmm. in Tacoma Park. And some of them will sit down and have real conversation with me, but some of them just can't do it. Right. They don't know, like they're not in tune with their feelings. They're not in tune with what they what they see in the future. Like mm-hmm. you asked me when I was a kid, what I was gonna be. Bruh, I tell you, I was like, I'm a, pl- I'm a playing the NBA. I'm gonna be a professional. Yeah. I told straight up, mm-hmm. and I, I have conversations with people that I could feel like, like that are in the same lane as me. Right. Like as a kid, I could sit here and talk to you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, but nowadays, I think like they misguided by the the the, the, the older people. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it is too. Like mm-hmm. a lot of parents nowadays, it's less whoopings. Is 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 more electronics. <laughs> Facts, yeah. Is um you know just is more freedom as a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, is multiple times I see kids just doing anything, like mm-hmm. saying anything. Right. And me, I'm looking at it like, what? Like you gonna let that? You gonna let that slide? Like right. you feel me? Because when I grew up, it's none of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When it's time to go, it's time to go. Time to go yep. You know what I'm saying? It's no. Eh, I wouldn't stay. Okay, stay. It's none of that. Right. You feel me? Yeah, crib, get get, you get your motherfucking ass up. Man. It's time to go. You feel me? Uh-huh. So like, I see these different things in parenting now, and um, you know, it is making the next generation like, like, handicap in a sense. You know, I just talked to my nephew. He twelve, and he, he my mom is like, Yo, you want something to eat? He like, yeah. Um, can I have the pizza that's in the fr- uh, refrigerator? I'm like. Bro, you better get up and heat up the pizza. It don't take nothing but throw it in the microwave. Right. You don't need nobody to do that for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he gets an attitude. And I'm like, bro, you almost 13, bro. Mm-hmm. You don't need nobody to put no, nothing. Right. Come on, man. Yeah, like, get up. He on the game. I'm talking about, yeah. Like, you don't pay no bills in this yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> I swear to God, what? So, let, yeah. Let, let your mom, back in the day, let your mom call your name more than once. Yeah, yeah, it's, more than once. So, brother. It's over. That's that's why I've noticed. Like I'm, I'm, I'm noticing. I should say, like hopefully, like as more par- more people become parents, right? They understand what they came from and try to, and, and really not try to let you know society like yeah. guide what's going on. And I think also, that's what's going on now. Society, yeah, social media, social media. Everybody was trying to be the lip parent. Yeah, right now too. Yeah, right? so, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying, like bro, like just make sure Sunny is good. You yeah. Know what I'm we don't gotta see him on the story every day, bro. We don't gotta see Lil yeah. Sonny on the story, yo. I'm telling you. Um, you feel me? So yeah, I feel you though, bro. That that's that, that's that's major. Um, but to light things up before we wrap up, man. Um, you know, obviously we're here in the DMV and we're in the studio, so we gotta talk about some music real quick. Yes. Man. Um, so on the, on some music, man. All right, mm-hmm. DMV. Um. I personally feel like we have a lot of talent here in, yeah. in terms of music as well, right? So, um, and especially growing up, I, I, I'm going to have this conversation real quick. I'm going to get into it later on as I start streaming and doing mm-hmm. things, right? But, you know, the era of, let's say, you know, 2014 to 2017, Man. 2016, really, you know, let's go top five from that era for you, or, or top three, top three, top five in that era for you. Man, for me, Q, number one. Mm-hmm. Dog, I'm like, I used to listen to Q all the time, bro. Okay. Um, another one for me, um, Will the Rapper. I actually messed with Will the Rapper when I was in uh, high school a lot. Right. 
and the last one um this is hard this is hard bro because i messed with uh lizzle i messed with lizzle, lizzle okay and i messed with uh shabazz as well but i think like lizzle made a lot more like the like different music mm -hmm. other than trap music you know vibe, what i'm saying yeah, yeah like lizzle had a good vibe so like i mess with lizzo a lot too okay. um that's an underrated name i ain't gonna lie yeah I'm bro say, yeah bro lizzo has some shit yeah like, lizzo has some shit bro this has some shit i fuck with flock too but i think like will the rapper was spit hard like his shit his shit tough q you can't beat that you can't you can't fuck with q or nothing <laughs> so you saying q greatest on time out of the out of the area in your opinion out of the area yeah Nah, Shy, I mean, Shy Glizzy. I'm about to say, it's okay if you think Q, though, because I ain't going to... Shy Glizzy uh, is better overall, but that era of Q was just it's, hard, it's bro. Hard. I think it's a match, too. That bro. shit, you can't, you can't repeat that, bro. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, I think the, the most talented out of DMV ever is No Savage. Okay. You feel me? He's, he's, he's OD. Yeah. You feel me? But, like, um, I think that, 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 that era that Q had was... Tuh. Yeah, Tuh. It was crazy. Yeah. It was like that. It was crazy. That, the, that was when mixtapes were still mixtaping at the time. Well, at least Q brought the mixtape yeah. back to, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I fucked with Lyso, too. Lyso had that. Yeah, Lyso had that. Uh, you know, good shit. Lyso was, was more on the remix tip. Yeah. Um, which I was, I don't, his by Iverson, it's funny. His by Iverson probably got played more out here than the original. Yeah, the original you know joint, yeah. Like, that shit. I, like so that shit was me she was hard live yeah she was hot. live like performance so that's like <laughs> yeah. no funny um but in terms of like music have you um are there is there anybody uh that you know personally or are there people that you that you can vouch for when it comes to the music out here yeah oh not to for sure okay. tfr not to like that i'm telling you like when it came to like we was talking about playlists before the games earlier um bro i would literally wake up I would play one of my man, my man Drew. He got a song called Abomination. I play that jump. Then I would play uh, No Savage Reaper. After that, it's all not to into the game. I swear to God, I got a playlist. It's all not to. It's unreleased shit. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Some shit that's on album music, but like, I swear, all not to. Uh -huh. Nas B, right. listening, listening Nas all the time. Like his shit hard. Right. You feel me? Um, I listen to Jiggy sometimes. Late night Jiggy, okay. hard. You feel me? Like, I, I see the thing with me is like when I get, when I got older, the trap music I kind of stopped solid. listening. Yeah. That shit make my fucking head hurt now. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't shit, bro. Album, man. You like ain't all this shit that these new niggas be speaking, I don't know what they talking it's about, free man. Music, man. I can't, bro. I be like, bro, them niggas is crazy, bro. <laughs> I don't even know what they saying. All you hear is seven six two noggin yeah. nigga nose off. Like, bro, I can't mm -hmm. do it, bro. I can't do it no more. Like. I'm a lot older now. I'm a lot more chill. You feel right. me? When I was younger, though, that shit. You feel me? Yeah. But now it's like, like I went to the gym in Tacoma Park like two days ago. Mm -hmm. No, it was last week. Last week I think Thursday. Mm -hmm. But they was playing that shit loud, but my head was hurting, bro. bro. I'm like, bro, I can't take that shit, bro. I gotta turn that shit down, bro. So yeah. Man. Okay. So like, talk about what? What else? What? Well, not just music in general, right? What? Are, what are some artists that you kind of have in that consistent rotation for you right now? Uh, right now, shit, Rilo, um, Lil Baby, Dirk, um, I would say sometime, like, I still run back A Boogie old tracks, cause, I go, I listen, though, yeah. 2016, bro, he when shit. he came out with artists, mm -hmm. that was the, I'm like, mm -hmm. nah, he OD, mm -hmm. you feel me, yeah. um, so those those is a couple of that I listen to right now. I like Rilo a lot because he be spitting, bro. He be talking that shit, bro. And I'm like, damn, hold on, go back. I'm like, go back, go back. What he say? What he say? Yeah. Yeah. And like, those are a couple of artists. Like I'm, I'm a, like my dad's Jamaican too, so I listen a lot of Jamaican artists too. Right. So I got like a variety of uh, stuff that I listen to. Like some days I hop in the car, two thousands playlist, play that jump. You feel me? Some days I hop in the car, Jamaican. I'm, you feel me? Then I play Little Baby and them. Um, so it just depends for real, for real. So how, is there, is there a way, uh, what has music, I, I would say, like, how, how is music, like, kind of, what if, how, let me, let me ask this right way. Is there, like, a, 
how do you view or how do you use music? I kind of yeah. ask in a way, right? Because like you know, some people they just listen to listen. Yeah. Some people like like they use music to kind of help them get through whatever. Like yeah. so not, especially as a hooper, right? So I spend a lot of time in like the gym. You don't want a quiet space, right? right. Sometimes, right. right. So you just need something to get you going, right? So yeah. like, how does how has music kind of helped you in terms of just kind of getting to where you are? Sometimes, yeah. Just, I think that. Yeah. I think that music, like for me. Music is more like a tool I use this to like mm -hmm. relate to somebody else that's right. rapping about something. You feel me? Like, I think that a lot of the stuff uh, not to talk about, mm -hmm. I could relate to because I know what he's talking about. Right. You feel me? I've been there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, that that that's why that's why I play him a lot because like I know him. I know what he's talking about. I've been there, and the shit just hit different when you understand what someone's saying. Right. You feel me? I think like artists, like the big artists. Um, some of them, you know, they rap about good shit. Like, A Boogie, I relate to him a lot. When he be talking about the love shit, yo, he be yeah, going right. crazy, yo. You feel him? He, he him? He and then, him, like, the and then, like, um, I think, like, a, a, like, nowadays, even a female artist, they good, but they don't be talking about shit, bro. Right. You feel me? Like, it be cool, but I'll be like, bro, this is poison, and this is poison yeah. in the mind of the yo youth, yo. Like, what nah, the fuck? Shit, so, like, like it, it it's crazy like i use music just to you know i, I just vibe out the music like it depends what mood i'm in i might get drunk one time and start listening to some old ass old shit ass you shit. feel me and that shit just get the crank and i'm like ah damn i ain't know this song crank yeah. this hard i might listen to music and then go back to the cute fool shabazz era you feel me right. and then but like music never been like a thing for me where it's like I need it when I'm in it. Like, when I need it when I'm working out, I don't need music and shit like that. I, I even hated playing open gym with music playing in the background. I'm just like, bro, this, like, I'm, I'm here to play. I'm here to, you know, get a job done. But, um, don't worry. Lil, Lil Baby's still my favorite. Um, him and Dirk's still my favorite. Young Boy, too, is. Some of his stuff is like that. his stuff is like yeah, that. Young boy like, from like twenty, like seventeen to like twenty, twenty, twenty one. Bro, like that. awesome cool. shit. God I damn, that like that, bro. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, so so I gotta ask real quick because you you, you talk about the you know the love real quick. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I, I've seen just just I'm not trying to get all your business. Or yeah. Try to pry open or nothing like <laughs> that. But you know I, you know how some people are, especially when they. They see things like, oh shit, you know, yeah. you start rapping about whatever, whatever, yeah. right? Nah, nah, nah. I just, I, more so what I want to ask is how has what you've been doing and yeah. balancing the relationship, mm -hmm. like how is, what is, how has that been for you? Yeah. Because um, obviously, you know, there's some people that, some people, they, 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 they fully invested in the one thing at a time. Yeah. They can't do well at trying to balance, especially right. when it comes to relationships, right? I'm yeah. going to call out some, some fellas right quick, right? Y'all, I'm... <laughs> Straight yes man to the woman, you know yeah, what I'm saying? It's yeah. like sweetheart, like you gotta, you gotta figure out the balance. So like yeah. talk about what the balance was like for you and just relationships, dealing yeah. with women and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean I think it's it, it's something that's hard bro. Like if you young mm -hmm. and you trying to get somewhere, it's 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 hard unless you got that partner that understand like mm -hmm. where you trying to go. Like my girl, she understand like some days, you know what I'm saying, we can't do certain things because I got some shit I gotta do. You feel me? If you got a partner that understand that and that's there for you um, through the tough times, because shit, if you if you with each other, you got that financial burden on you too, bro. You paying every <laughs> hey every time you go eat, them bills <laughs> them bills add up, bro. Them bills add up. I'm yeah, telling you so. Up, man. So like, you gotta find that partner that's like, mm -hmm. okay, I got it this time. All right. You know what I'm saying? Or I help you with this. I help you with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's I think it's give or take. You know, you gotta just find the right person. I think nowadays the dating pool is just That's trash. The people in there for the wrong reason. Like, tell you, boy. people in there, like, mm -hmm. they'll break up with somebody and then they get right back in the dating pool. Like, bro, you don't need to date yeah. nobody. Just exactly. be single or be cool. Yourself. You mm -hmm. feel me? Be truthful about certain things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, straight up, I ain't have, bro. I think before my girl right now, the last girl I had, bro, like, actual relationship was like you, bro. So like from like 2018 to 2022, mm -hmm. bro, I was I was focused. Just, yeah. I was focused, but I was I was fucking with different bitches. I didn't know I was doing what I had to do. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But like, I never wanted to be in a relationship because I knew like I don't got time for you. Right. Like, and that's not fair to you. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And I'll tell them that, and that's your day decision. But just voice yourself sometimes and just let somebody. Be 
honest, man. Yeah, bro. Like, like, as, a, as a man, it's hard to, like, voice your feelings sometimes, but you feel like, I don't want to be soft and like mm-hmm. that. But that shit gonna come back and bite you in the end because it's like, a motherfucker could really tell you, like, if you mad at something, you're like, why you ain't say that before? Right. Now you look dumb and shit because you didn't say that before because what? You thought you was gonna look a certain way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's hard, though, balancing, bro. You, you got good days, you got bad days. No relationship is perfect right. ever. You feel me? For sure. Right, that's, so, yeah. that's real. Right, that's real. <sighs> a lot of game being spoken here today. I <laughs> feel like that. You know what I'm saying? We, like, literal basketball game to life. Just gave y'all a little relationship with people and, like, act. Like, you know, they like, they, people like that kind of yeah, stuff. they like podcast. that stuff. They do, it's they like, do, though. They I, do. Like, I'm, I, I don't like talking about it as yeah. much, but, like, they like it because, you know, people, everybody, yeah. like, they, they have the, 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 the gem on the advice yeah, they, nowadays. They, and like, it's controversy. You'll see people in the comments yeah. get, get to talk to mm-hmm. them. Like, yeah. me and one of my managers mm-hmm. like, bro, we got to make a podcast just for, like, mm-hmm. just, like, about couple shit, about, like, right. women and men, like, how they mm-hmm. differences. But, like, right. Yeah, it's just it's it's one of those hot topics. Everybody got the right answer to. Everybody got that. So, uh, but I mean, I know I'm gonna give people from a little more of that from time to time. But mm-hmm. obviously, the whole the whole point of this podcast today was to give flowers, highlight, spotlight Jordan Reed here today, man. Oh, man. Thank you again, bro, yes, for pushing up. And obviously, we had for people that's been tapped in to speak the truth. This is probably the longest podcast we did in a long time, y'all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We didn't yeah. got. From point A to point B, like I was <laughs> earlier, old man, Brad right. Pinsbeck. Um, but nah, for real, like I said, p- thank you again, though, for real, dog. Um, obviously, I'm trying to get back into the flow of, you know, bringing people out here to, you know, the studio, seeing what's going on in the community, keeping people, like, not even just artists, right? We have a hooper in the, in the building right now today. Like, yeah. just if you got that story, I'm trying to bring you in. If you got some, like, if you can articulate it, too, like, because obviously, if you sat through this conversation, you know Jordan ain't just talking out his ass and he's yeah. just saying just anything, yeah. right? Someone that, that, that really came from, from experience, from something that can articulate it and pass it on to the next person. So, obviously, like that's what I'm trying to continue to foster on this podcast, man. So, I mean, I'm just excited for, you know, the, the continue, uh, continuation and push forward. Obviously, sure. Jordan said he got some people that he might send his way now. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you, bro. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, we gonna we gonna we gonna tap it. Let's see. I ain't gonna lie, Mill or somebody want. I might want. Yeah, I was just thinking that in my head. That's I crazy. Want, I, want, I, that, I want Mill to come I, through. Bro, I promise you, bro. I promise you, I'm gonna text him right after Stop. I leave, bro. bro. I'm gonna be like, yo, I need you to do this podcast for me, bro. Your That's story, so, everything, just from basketball, mm-hmm. everything got to get out there, bro. Hell yeah. ones. Hell so yeah, yeah, I'm gonna definitely um, tap you on, man. For sure. Tap All right, you see what's going on, right? Hey, look, we we making it happen right here. Double up studio shout to the guys, shout to the team, man. Feel me? We doing it right here in Moco. All right, everybody try little bros, but we we on shits, man. Yeah. Stop playing yeah. with us. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jay Reed, man, thank you again, Appreciate man, from Moco County. All right, bro, underdog, bro, legend around the way, man. Don't got shit to prove to y'all no more, man. Stop asking to put them in these leagues, man. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, dog. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh,